Thank you. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present in this session because it's it's a bit of an odd one, citizen science. It didn't fit really in, but I was I'm very happy that I, I got this talk. Two years ago, I also had it, uh, but uh, um, also about ion water. At the time, we only had the color. At the moment, so, um, up until now, we've well, we made some nice uh, further achievements. Let me start by saying that I'm presenting on behalf of myself, Hans van der Woerd, from the uh, Free University of Amsterdam. And um, the whole concept is based on uh, ideas of uh, Marcel Wernand, who, of uh, NEOS, who unfortunately passed away last year, in, in the, well, half a year ago, um, where he had a disease ALS where he couldn't, uh, he couldn't fight against. So, uh, well, but we still uh, think about him often, so. And this, uh, we keep pushing this forward because it's based on his ideas. Um, so, quick, some words about um, citizen science. Um, probably all heard about it, it's coming up more and more. Um, but there are, it's, it's quite a struggle to get it, to get the data taken up to, uh, to, to keep moving forward with concepts. It's of course about, uh, it's okay, dude. <laughs> about uh, involving and empowering the citizen and um, making them, well, it's, it's, it's two sides. It's empowering the citizen, but also meant that providing them something back. So to keep the trigger, um, to keep them you know, working on science, to, to provide data, to provide information. Um, and there's more and more initiatives. Um, yeah, most of them, that you see around are uh, on biodiversity, cuddly things, seals, whales, birds. I mean, uh, that, that it all originates from hmm? sea turtles. Yeah, they're, they're, they have big communities around them. Um, what we do in Iron Waters, aiming at water quality, and that's less cuddly. It's it's harder, but it can be very rewarding. Um, Quickly some background on Iron Water, it's, this is a repetition of two years ago, so if you were there you, uh, you would have seen it. It's based on a project called uh, SITCLOPS, the IDs came forward from that, where several concepts were tested uh, for involving citizens with low cost uh, sensors. Um, the basic concept was around water color that we uh, created, Iron Water Color is the first one. But recently we expanded with, more, uh, with a kit for more uh, concepts. And Iron Water Color, the, the basic version of the app is um, uh, around the use. Well, I think many of you will, you will know the Forel Oul scale, 21 um, colors of natural waters from uh, value one, which is deep blue, and uh, 21 is uh, dark brown. Um, and we actually implemented that scale in an app. So you take a picture and uh, you rank the color. And it's all about taking the data, validating it, also, uh, and then uh, feeding the data back and making it downloadable. Iron Water um, has an app, it has a website, and it has services. So the app is uh, fairly simple. You measure, you take a picture. At that time, the location, time, uh, date and time is taken. Uh, some additional information, so you take a picture of the water. Um, you add some information, are there clouds? Uh, do you see the bottom? If you see the bottom, it's not valid. Uh, then it's sent, submitted to the server, central server. And on the server, we do additional validation. It's uh, called Wacodi. It's an algorithm. It takes parts of the image and it determines the color again. So you set the color of the Fourier-Uller scale yourself as a user. but on the server, it's set again and it's compared. So you can we can we can get an idea of uh, how good the uh, the user was. Because actually, we often trust now the Wacodi is being improved more and more. We trust that more than the user's judgment because there's a lot of uh, yeah light reflectance often. Um, so yeah, on the, on the website you can make uh, uh, selections of the of the data. You can see what is there. Um, and the users can also check each other. So if you see in your area, if you check all the values, uh, you can uh, see in the 
second part, you can see the details. And if somebody took a picture of the, the grass on their lawn, uh, yeah, you can just flag it and say, this is wrong. It ends up at the desk of my colleague. He sees it coming in, clicks one link, and the, the image is gone. But also, we are improving Bacodi itself to make, uh, to include it and make a judgment that it's not water. And if it's sure it's not water, it can immediately uh, flag it. <laughs> so the current data coverage, without any promotion, it's uh, quite global, as you see. We have many measurements in the, in the US, many in, the, in, in Europe, and also in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, some credits for some uh, uh, very active groups. We are, we're also in contact with them. This is Casco Bay, it's a volunteer, uh, volunteers organization there, and they measure, they, they all live there, the people, they do all kinds of measurements in their surroundings, and they've adopted the app, and they actually create really nice time series, because many of them go back to the same spot on a monthly basis, take a picture, and uh, so yeah, well, I haven't heard of any scientist then making use of that data and see what's, what's going on there, but well, the basis is there. And even in Borneo, my colleague said, it shouldn't look at this. <laughs> Somebody's really going out there. And you see, the, the, well, fantastically, the, the color of the brown river water and then moving to, towards the blue. And, uh, and they've been very active going, I think, with a little boat uh, through all these uh, areas. We have no contact with them. So what they did, we don't know. We haven't been able to, to track that down. So we have... Um, we have some services, some download services available. If you're a user, you get the more pictures you make, the higher you get in rank. It's something to provide back this little game or reward. Um, and of course, we have a WFS and WFS service to share the data. All the data is public um, and downloadable. The most interesting one is the recent expansions. I don't know if, uh, yeah, Seth is still there. And Roger, I don't know. In Australia with uh, CSRO, we, uh, we have a corporation there. Um, Ironwater Australia, they've adopted the concept and um, ex we we're expanding it and they're using it in the citizen science program in Australia um, and what we did there is, or what actually CSRO did, they um, are going to use it to uh, supply it to rangers, to schools for education and they created a, a kit, a backpack and we adjusted the app, so not only you, can you take the picture of the watercolor, but you can fill out also additional parameters. And, well, you see the list that you can measure. It's a very expensive backpack because it's, a, <laughs> it's 500 euros. But if you give it to a ranger and you get additional measurements in an area where you nev normally never go to, it's, it's worth it. Or if you give it to a school and they have a whole uh, semester or they have lessons around it, it's worth to, uh, to do it. Um, we are looking for cheaper versions. Uh, we might have the chance to do something in China, and I bet in China they can do this for under 50 euros, a backpack <laughs> like this, so it would be fantastic. So as I said, what, why do they use it in Australia? They, they use it to, uh, additionally to the remote sensing data that they have, additionally to existing uh, in-situ data, and yeah, they, they have in many parts where there's water, they just have no no way to, to, to do in situ measurement. One use case that we use it in is in the Murray River. Uh, Murray River um, has a lot of uh, uh, problem with the algae blooms, um, but they have options to flush the system. And what they want to do is, with people living there, supply them the app, um, have them take uh, pictures of the color of the water. And of course, they could maybe install something el electronically, but um, they want to have the contact with the with a, the citizen, create water awareness, and then um, um, when it starts to become too green, they flush the system and then it starts again. Well, because the color of the water is a driver for the uh, chlorophyll A, there's a, there's a relation, there's, a, there's some research done also from uh, uh, compared to the app. So there's some, there's real scientific proof that the data coming from the app is really useful. And um, so they're using this as additional uh, data. And how they're, uh, how they're going to do it, they're going to, as I said, they're going to contact 
schools. They have uh, contacts by the Australian Science Teachers Association. And the other, as I said, is the Rangers, uh, uh, in the, especially up in the north. Um, and they, they've already started uh, uh, contacting them and they're using the first version of the app and the, and the backpack. Um, if you now look at the, uh, on the Iron Water website, you can see already the, uh, some data coming in. Well, lots of measurements in the Melbourne Harbour, the bottom left. And the website, it's not live yet, um, but that will show then uh, also some, some uh, yeah, more aggregations of the data. And, um, in, the, in the project itself, CSRO will create uh, products based on it. And the idea is that we will adjust the app. So if you've submitted then your, your data, you get um, information which is available in that area. For example, a time series of the watercolor or something, you get that back in the app. So you, you, well, since they are interested in that, it's a added value for the for the volunteer. <coughs> Another one, which is very interesting, I just want to show it because it gives such a, a strong. If you want to be successful with citizen science, you need to have somebody that measures for you. You need to have somebody that uses it, and you need to have the the creator of the of the app. We have something called Waterplantmelder, which is the water plant alarm. And it's a, well, you cannot even call it citizen science, maybe, but um, people have a problem if they sail, they get stuck in the Dutch lakes. We have actually been so successful with uh, um, improving the water quality, it's now so clear in the IJsselmeer that water plants are a big nuisance. They, they grow too fast, they're too high, and people get stuck. And two minutes? Okay. So, um, um, we created an app and a mobile website where they can, uh, the sailors can say, okay, now I'm, I'm stuck here and you should do something about it. And of course the government already does something, they have a whole plan, but there's limited funding. And in this way, um, they know now where the problem areas are and they can, every year, they can revise their mowing, let's say, of the, the water plants. We have to see, because now the next step is in the hands of the government, we get, um, this is the website, we had first summer immediately enormous amount of, uh, of uh, problems because the, the, it's, it's a big problem. And um, yeah, now it's up to the government to, to actually do something about this. And you get this type of observations. So if you're interested in uh, locations of specifically this plant, it's all the same species, then uh, well, it can also be used for that. Um, to conclude, um, and that's why I wanted to show this last one, it was very successful because it hit exactly a, a demand of a, of a group. And if, you, if, if we're able, and for water quality, as I said, it's not so cuddly, but if we are able to show that it's scientifically valid, uh, that we have a, a real user of the data, and we can feed something back to, uh, to the volunteer, um, and I think the best way is to go via a, a volunteer community, then it can be very successful. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, well, I was very delighted that we had this opportunity with us in Australia to see what can be done, and um, I hope it will be very uh, successful mm -hmm. now uh, after one year. Um, oh yeah, and the last one, and that's often forgotten in many uh, citizen science project is the, is the business side, the financial side. It's, it's most of it, yeah, it starts bottom up. Oh, it's so nice, and uh, we, we have all kinds of uh, information. And uh, but somebody needs to maintain the system, maintain the app, maintain the, uh, the hosting of the website, services, etc. It needs some funding, and um, therefore, you have many initiatives, European projects all around, but they, they all go. <laughs> and then they pass away. So, well, it will be a challenge and uh, for us as well. So, therefore, I'm, it's also a, a request. If you find concepts and you think, well, this might be very nice to integrate it, and I have a, a user, a water management authority or something um, that uh, could make use of this, let me know, and we can maybe cooperate and. Uh, well, hopefully, 
provide a good future for citizen science, marine citizen science. Thank you.